Finally, I'm visiting Malantan Field Centre to talk to Professor John Altringham of Leeds University about bats in the Yorkshire Dales. Bats are very much neglected, but they're a very important part of our, of our wildlife. That almost one in four of our mammal species are bats, and in terms of numbers, they probably outnumber most other species as well. I asked John what makes them so ecologically important. Bats are very small. All of these bats we're talking about from the size of my thumb you know, up to the size of a hamster. So you know, how can such a small animal be, be that important? But they're, they're, they're insectivores. They feed on insects and they feed on huge numbers of insects. And in some parts of the world, bats have now been shown in the last few years to be important controllers of pests of crops. So in Texas, for instance, they're saving the cotton industry in southern Texas $0.75 million every year just because they eat the moths that uh, lay eggs and caterpillars on the plant. I was intrigued as to how bats were doing locally and how the Yorkshire Dales plays a large part in their conservation. It was recognised 30 years ago that, that bats were in decline and there's lots of anecdotal evidence that we're losing bats, we're losing potentially losing species in this country. So legislation came in to give bats better protection, protecting their roosts primarily and protecting the bats themselves. Here in the Dales we've got a fairly unique system in that we're in a, a limestone landscape and you know underneath this limestone there are lots and lots of caves. So in the Yorkshire Dales more than 1800 cave entrances, hundreds of kilometres of passage and those caves are used by bats. They're used by bats for mating in late summer and in autumn and then they're used for hibernation in the winter. But of course the caves are not just used by bats, we use them, we, we go caving in them and there's, there's a fairly big caving community. And there's absolutely no reason why the two communities can't live together as long as the cavers understand that there are bats there and they cave in an appropriate way. So one of the things we've done in the Yorkshire Dales in addition to studying the bats and understanding which caves are important and why those caves are important is to draw up a conservation code specifically for the Yorkshire Dales caves so that when cavers go caving they know how to disturb the bats as little as possible. And you know, that's obviously very important because in the winter the bats are hibernating, they're trying to save energy, they want to stay asleep most of the winter and noisy cavers are potentially going to wake them up. Um, but follow a simple code and, and the bats are, bats are happy. But it isn't always as simple to understand how effective and successful efforts are. It's the simplest question to ask, how many have we got, are we getting more of them? And it's one of the hardest things to do in biology and it's very difficult to find the resources to do that kind of work. Where we can measure conservation is the impact in terms of education people's attitude to bats, people's knowledge of bats, and there's no doubt that that's gone up enormously in the last 10 or 20 years. Most people now not only know about something about bats, they appreciate bats. They have a, you know, instead of being horrible little uh, creepy creatures, uh, there's something to be admired, something to be curious about. So I think we can certainly measure our success in those terms. And the research Leeds University do goes further into understanding the bat's ecology. We've been trying to understand the sort of intimate relationship between the environment and the bat so that we understand what the bat needs by way of roost and food and how that affects its social behaviour and how that affects its mating behaviour and therefore the whole population structure of the bats is being studied in relation to the landscape. And obviously the better we understand the bats, the better we are able to protect them. The field centre itself has a colony of bats in the eaves of the building, which today Dr Anita Glover and Leeds University students will catch for research purposes. So the roost that's in the uh, north wing at Malantan is uh, common pipistrels. Um, it's a maternity colony up to about 200 individuals. So there'll be females in there at the moment and they'll have their young because most of them will have given birth. We'll expect them to be emerging um, on average about 20 minutes after sunset. They'll be coming out to feed um, in the immediate area so there's good deciduous woodland and they've got the tarn where there's lots of insects next to the woodland adjacent to the water. So they've really got everything they need here on the reserve which is like an oasis for them. Which is not unlike the Yorkshire Dales in general. 
with all its varied habitats. Bats are very agile, and it's a common misconception that they have poor eyesight. So, how do you catch bats? When we want to catch bats, we've got a range of, of techniques that we use. So if we're catching them once they're out foraging away from the roost, we can use mist nets, which are similar to the nets that we use to catch birds, or harp traps, um, which is another technique. But if we're catching straight out the roost when they're coming out of small exit points, uh, the simplest thing to do is just to use a hand net equivalent to a big butterfly net mounted on a long pole. You just have to stand there patiently below the roost and just wait for the bats to emerge and drop into the net. And once the bats are caught, there are numerous ways they can be analysed to manage their conservation. The bats that we catch tonight out of the roost, we are just really interested in recording species, sex, age and reproductive status. Um, but we have other projects where we're interested in recognising individuals, trying to get population estimates and also looking at seasonal movements between where they spend the summer and where they go to mate and hibernate later in the year. For those projects we're actually ringing the bats that are caught and each ring is an individual number that identifies that particular bat that allows us to look at population structure, at questions to do with paternity analysis and mating systems, so there's a whole sort of suite of questions we can address with those techniques. So with my infrared camera in hand and a bat detector to hear them echolocating, I went to see the first bats emerging. I've met some amazing people working to protect a wonderful place, though I can't help but think I have barely scratched the surface. Mm -hmm.